Yes, today let's do something different. I have never created a resume for myself because I have never worked for anyone. But I'm going to show you today how to create a better resume and increase the chances of getting a better job. The whole idea is very simple. Which tool, which technology, how good it looks doesn't matter. What matters is differentiation. There are so many resumes people are going to get and you have to differentiate. Yours should look better and more appealing. That's the whole idea. Usually, we use Word for creating resumes. You may start with a template, but today we are going to use Word without a template because you should understand the ingredients of a good resume, then you can make a much better output. Now, the first thing you need to understand is styles because styles are good for uniform and professional documents. It also eliminates the need for repetitive manual formatting. Styles are already available. Go to the home tab and look at the styles, heading 1, 2, 3 and up to 9 levels. There is also a title style. You can use styles for main topics. For example, your details, your experience, your educational background, all those headings should look similar. Remember, styles is a very useful feature and I have a great detailed video about it. Look at the icon and refer to it if you need. Now the other thing, to understand when you are using word whether for resume or anything else is never, never use tabs. tabs tabs are bad tables are good the next thing you should know is your photo because the first thing people are going to look at when they open your resume is not the layout and formatting they are going to look at your photo now most photos are rectangular why not make it circular so here is the deal put your photo click on the photo go to picture formatting and there is crop now, under the crop drop down, there is crop to shape and make it circle or something else. That will make you stand out. But then the photo looks flat. It's as though it's a part of the page or even on screen, it is merged with the page. You want to stand out, isn't it? So here is the deal. There are many styles available for an image. So hover through those styles and you will see which one looks best. If you don't want to do all that, at least put a shadow. Now shadow should be inner shadow and see how much difference it makes with the shadow and without the shadow. So simple things matter. You can also use the picture corrections area to adjust brightness contrast right within Word, Excel or PowerPoint. You don't need Photoshop. Now I'm sure you have done a lot of work and you have a lot of experience. So typically a resume will not fit on one page. And assuming your recruiter is going to look at it on screen and not as a printout, you should help them navigate across your document quickly. And that is done by putting hyperlinks. Hyperlink doesn't always mean an external web page. It can be link within the document. So many people don't even know this. So you can actually have a mini table of contents in the header itself. So maybe you have five pages of extensive work you have done but you can put five hyperlinks right at the top so the person who is looking at your resume can decide to jump to the most appealing topic. And of course, after every heading, make sure you have a backlink as well so there is a two-way navigation almost like a website. Nobody does it, you do it, you are better, obviously. Now when you look at anything, you first look at images and then look at text. Now you should use that simple knowledge to your advantage put some images other than your photo. Now, I'm not saying put landscapes, but for every heading, if you put a relevant icon, it definitely makes it catchier and looking at the icon and understanding it much faster than reading verbose text. Where do you get icons from? Well, Word itself has some 2000 plus icons and many pictures, illustrations, explore them and use it to your advantage. So if you're not a creative person, most probably your page background will be white. Why? There are so many backgrounds available. Again, as a part of stock images, use some abstract background and make it faded out. Otherwise, the text on top of the image will not be seen. So either adjust it or there is a specific effect, which I will show you. It's called a washout effect. How do you do it? Put the image, put it behind text and now go to picture effects, color and make it wash out that will make it look like a watermark and that's really beautiful if used correctly fonts are really really powerful 
Now you don't have to download fonts and you have to try something weird, no. Within Word itself, you can have predefined collections of fonts. If you use the fonts which are given by Microsoft, then most probably you don't have to worry. But if you do use an exotic font, it is possible that that font is not available on the other side. Then it will look bad. So what do you do? Before you send a document, and this is not just for Word, it is for Excel, PowerPoint, everywhere. Go to File, Options, Save, and say Embed Fonts, and enable this checkbox called Embed All Characters, so that the other party can even edit. That other party does not need that font installed, but still your documents will look perfect. And that's what we are aiming for. I have seen people sending voluminous resumes with 50 items under experience. Now, although that may look like comprehensive, do you really think anybody is going to read it? No. So what you should do is give the top 5, 10, whatever, and then embed an Excel file containing all the details. So if someone is really interested, they can open the file. Now remember, you don't want to attach two files. How do you embed an Excel file inside a Word file? Well, first create the Excel file and then go to insert object and then choose an icon. And once you do that, the file gets packaged inside Word. And someone double clicks on it, the file will automatically open. This is really useful. So like in Netflix, for example, you look at the thumbnail, read the description, and only if you like it, you click on it. Same thing we are achieving by embedding a detailed Excel file inside a concise Word resume. Now this idea, nobody is going to tell you. tell you. Insert a map. You heard it correctly. Insert a map in your resume. Now you'll ask me why. Remember, whatever is your job, don't you think there are some locations involved? Locations of your customers, locations of the trainings you have done, whether you are in product industry or service industry, there are some locations as a part of your experience. So make a list of those locations in Excel. I am going to tell you how to create the map, obviously. So just make a list of those locations. Add some quantity next to it, number of customers, number of users, complexity of the project, whatever. And then create a table. Now go to insert menu and look at that 3D map button. It will automatically pick up your location column. You don't need lat longs. And then once it draws the map, check whether it has understood it correctly. Look at the drop down under the location and make sure it is city or country or whatever data you have put. Once it is done, you want the map to show the location names. So open the main menu on top and choose map labels. So far, so good. But you want to show the volume. That's why we put the second column. Now below the location, you will see height. Choose that drop down and choose the second column, which has some quantifiable data. And now you will see 3D bar charts appearing, which is brilliant. Now, these may not look right now very good because you are looking at it from 30,000 point of view. But look at the buttons. There is a zoom in, there is zoom out. Every map has that. But this one has pan and tilt button also. So try the correct view and then take a screenshot and put it in your resume. Going on the same lines, remember visuals are better. Map is great. But there is another thing which all of you know, but you have never used it in a resume. That's called charts. Don't you make charts every day or every month? Why not put one in your resume? Now, what do you put in the chart? Your customer segmentation, number of users, same thing in map, but maybe there was no location information. Type of project, how many users handled? Could be a very nice chart to insert. So think about what you have done and put the relevant chart if it is applicable. It will make a difference. So now let's change track and something completely different. Stop it. Get some help. Remember, when you are sending a resume, you are literally selling yourself. Now, if you go to any salesperson and they are trying to sell something, do they use Word or PowerPoint? Of course, they use PowerPoint. Now, the question is, have you created your resume in PowerPoint? Now, you'll say, nobody has, to make you karo. Agreed. Because nobody has, you do. That's called differentiation. So, let's do that. Now, how exactly to create it? That's up to you. 
but I'll tell you the format and the pattern which you should use. Because when the person opens the PPT, you should ask them to run it and give them an interactive experience. Now, what you do is, you go to insert menu, insert zoom. You will see section zoom. Now click on that section zoom, it shows you all the slides. Now wherever the topic starts, select the slides. So in this case, I am going to select four slides. The remaining slides are connected to each other, so it becomes a sort of a section. The moment you click OK, it adds a new slide and the main slides which you selected become a menu. Now run that slide and see the magic. It shows you the menu. When you click on any of the main topics, it will go to that topic. It will traverse the topic, click, 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 topic finished. It comes back to main menu without writing a single line of code, without putting a single hyperlink manually. You actually created a beautiful interactive presentation of yourself. Tell me, would you not like it if you were a recruiter? So try it out and get a better job tomorrow. I am sure you will have some doubts. Do post it in comments. I would be happy to answer those questions as well. If you want me to create videos on some specific topics, your suggestions are most welcome. If you found this useful, do spread the word. Everyone, your friends, your colleagues, your loved ones are also going to benefit from it. And of course, I publish lots of such stuff almost on a daily basis. So subscribe to the channel and share it with others. That's it for now. Thank you.